Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I've been changed here, free, delivered. I found joy, peace, grace, and favor. I've been changed, I've been changed, in the presence of the Lord I've been healed, free, delivered, delivered, I found joy, peace, grace, and favor. And favor and right now right now is the today today I've been changed I've been changed and I have waited for this moment to come and I For your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't go. I can't go back to the way you used to be. Oh, no. Before your presence came and changed me. All my shame gives. Forgiven, forgiven, no more change. Fear, my past, my past is over, is over. And right now, right now is today. And I have waited Live for this moment to come And I won't let it pass me by ah, ah. So we say I won't go back I can't go back to the way to be before your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't go. I, won't go. I can't go back can't go to the back way you used to, to be. The way be. Oh, no. Before your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't go. I, won't go. I can't go back. Can't go For your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't go. I can't go back to the way you used to be. Oh, no. Before your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me say i won't go I won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be 
before your presence came and changed me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke. And um, verse 25 through verse 28 is where we'll read. We'll use that for a text. Um, Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28. And you might jot down Proverbs 22, verse 3, even though I quote it. Um, that's part of what we need to be doing. Amen? I thank God that the Word is always on time, and I thank God that He's with us. You know, as we were singing that song, you know, the Lord is in this place. You know, we need to have faith for that. Because he said that where two or three are gathered in my name. Amen. There am I in the midst. The Lord is in this place. We need to believe that. If we believe the Lord is in this place. We also need to believe that he'll do what we allow him to do in our lives if we'll yield ourselves Amen. in this place. Amen. Amen. If we believe that, then we know we'll leave different going out than we were when we came in. Amen. That the Lord God will affect some change in us. He'll build where I need building. He'll strengthen where I'm weak. Amen. He'll fortify areas of my life that are broken down. And he'll give me guidance for the days ahead. Amen. See, see, if we get our faith engaged with the word of God, the word of God will change us when we hear it. Sometimes we just kind of talk just to sit and receive. No, we need to hear and do. Amen. Glory to God. I just gave you that. Amen. I, I believe the Lord wanted to speak that to us. Amen. And so if we'll get our faith engaged with what we hear and not be a forgetful hearer. Because the things that you'll be hearing, you need to keep in mind going forward. So that we can keep our bearings about us, no matter what we see going on in this world. Luke chapter 21, verse 25, we're there, right? Let's all read aloud together. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts fell in them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son, the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draw it nigh. Amen. In Proverbs 22, verse 3, it says, The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hides himself. In other words, makes provision for what's ahead, what's coming our way. But beloved, you can't prepare for what you have not foreseen. And see, since we can't see, we have to rely on the eyes of God. Amen? The revelation of the Word of God to give us direction, understanding and insight for the things that are yet among us and the things that are to come. Let's pray. Amen. God, I pray that you would give a, a special outpouring of your presence in your anointing among us today. Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost, our teacher, would reach into the recesses of our hearts and our minds, God, to shake us off of mindsets, God, to renew us in our hearts, God, to give us understanding and insight. And I pray a boldness, God, to live out loud what we believe in Jesus' name. And for it, God, we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to call today's message, and I wrestled with this, amen. And, and be honest, I tried to get away from it, amen. After hearing uh, last week's message about help, I said, praise God, we really do need help. And I, and I was kind of thinking, well, you know, I don't really want to go in this direction, but it's been in my heart for several weeks. And so I was going, I want to do something a little lighter on today. Well, you know, there's good news in what we'll share, but I want to call this mega trends. 2021 and beyond. What's ahead? 
what lies ahead because we can't prepare for what we can't envision. And one of the fallen, one of the shortcomings of the church, especially in the United States, is that we just kind of live by the seat of our pants. We don't anticipate. The Bible tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices, but we always get caught off guard. That's not God's desire. Amen. We need to be ahead of what's happening, not responding to what's happening. Amen. And that's one of the things we seek to try to do here anyway, is to understand the time so you and I know what we ought to be doing. And one of the things we need to be doing now is for seeing what is out there. We've already gone, we already see a lot of what's out there before it got here. Amen. We're not just free uh, to do and live as we please because the governor said it was okay. And my freedom and my liberty don't come from government. Amen. The Bible says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. You see our liberty, amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And you and I are to walk in that liberty irregardless of what the world is doing. Amen. Because the one that frees us first frees us in our hearts and our minds so we can live irregardless of what's going on out here in this world. Now, I call this mega trends 2021 and beyond. And, um, you know, because and I want to kind of base it on some of the social media type tech um, uh, phrases we hear like what's trending. You know, sometimes you'll put in an Internet search and in the drop down box, you see what's trending. You know, you know, it can be a general search. It can be on Twitter. You know, certain things are trending. I found they kind of changed the definition of trending. Uh, to fit this social media age, but in the, as far as a general definition of trending, at dictionary.com, this is their definition, not man. Trending is emer says what is emerging as a popular uh, what is emerging as a popular trend. Now, kind of like in English, like I do, I hate it when a statement or a definition uses a word that is a root, but don't define the root. See, it simply says here, emerging as a popular trend. Well, what's a trend? <laughs> because if I don't know what a trend is, I don't really know what the emerging popular thing, it, I don't know where it's going. Amen? And so the word trend only means to take a particular direction or a path. And so when we see the terminology, what's trending, you know, what path is this information carrying me on? Because somebody's steering you in a certain direction by what's trending to stir your interest, to divert you from what you were looking for, to carry along a path they desire. Now, one of the trends we're going to look at, and not today, is the rise of AI, because that's artificial intelligence guiding you. Maybe based on what you've previously searched or what someone based on the algorithms want to lead you to. And if you don't know how to stay focused, you'll get led astray. Somebody said what's trending. Amen. And so a trend then is something that uh, we can see it in fashion and styles, you know, trending toward. You, you know, it used to be that, you know, uh, when it came to like dress wear, you know, most women used to have dresses with slips. See, that would keep it from clinging because you didn't want to stick into you in certain places. You know, it's getting harder to find those things. Amen. Because the trend has been to get away from it, to emphasize certain things that the world wants folk to focus on. And so I know that because, Sister Burke, it's getting hard to find the right kind of slips now. That's not my expertise. Just in case, amen. I'm not just <laughs> <laughs> amen. But, but certain things trend on a certain path for a certain reason. One of the trends in men's faction is to get away from traditional suits. And so the thing now is they have a lot of guys wearing uh, feminine style jackets that ride their backside. Y'all seen them little skinny jackets that it, they pull in like this when they tighten one button and then they flaring out. Well, that unisex type dressing is, is a trend, but it don't mean, mean you have to follow it. Somebody is trying to pull the culture 
in a certain direction. That's a trend. And when we begin to understand how these things work, amen, because Jesus is describing here the way or the path by which the world is currently headed. Amen. And in this discourse here, when they come to Jesus, he begins to describe a lot of things, amen. They ask Jesus, verse 7, Master, when shall these things be and what sign will there and and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? In other words, when they begin to trend in this direction, you know you're in the center of the last days. Amen. And so the world is trending in a certain direction, and Jesus here gives um, certain signs, amen, that you hear wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nation, verse 10, kingdom against kingdom, and earthquakes in diverse places, famines and pestilences as we've experienced on a personal level over this past year, and fearful sights and great things shall there be from heaven, amen. And so he describes certain things that will be trending prior to his coming, the path of the world we need to understand so you and I won't be surprised by what the world does. Amen? The Word of God also describes that the world will be trending increasingly perilous and dangerous. Amen? 1 Peter Timothy 4.1. Amen. Um, says in the latter times there will be great apostasy, so we shouldn't be surprised when we see people that say they know God walking away from God because there's been a trend over the last few years from people to depart from the faith. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. See, we see those trends. Amen. That ought to make you and I draw closer to Jesus, not follow the path away from him. He described and said that it would trend toward deception in the last days, that people wouldn't have discernment concerning what's right and what's wrong. Isaiah 5, 20 puts it this way. They will call right, wrong, sweet, bitter, bitter, sweet. In other words, an upending over our traditional morals and values. We see that happening right now. Our whole culture is trending that way. Amen. Our culture is trending to confusion when it comes to um, uh, our biological makeup. And so there's confusion afoot concerning what a man is and what a woman is. And can you transition from one sex to the other? Amen. See, that's trending in the world. The Bible tells us that this is the way the world would be going in the last days. So that centers us squarely in the last days. The Bible says in the last times, in the latter days. Amen. And so these are trends. Somebody said trend. Amen. And so we can see where it's headed and by the path it is trending toward. You know, that alone should give us some insight and understanding because another thing that's trending is the Lord is soon to return. Because he said that when we saw those things to lift up our heads, our redemption draws nigh. And so, but, and so those are what I call general trends. These are general things that we see happening in the world around us. But I want to focus in on what I call mega trends. Somebody say mega. Amen. Amen. Because mega means something that is really big, out of the ordinary, kind of big. Pastor, all those other things we saw, they're out of the ordinary. No, they're not. Because the Bible already said these things would be happening. So there's a general trend toward wickedness in the world. You and I shouldn't be surprised. The Bible says in the last days that men will be truth breakers, won't keep their word, lovers of, of, them, of their own selves without natural affection. See, those are general trendings in the world right now. And so we see the increase in wickedness and perversion. Those are foreseen things by the word of God. And so we see those as trends prophetically. When I say mega trends, these are things that kind of interrupt even that. Amen. And there are things that really press us even faster toward the days that are yet to come as far as prophecy. So I call this mega trends 2021 and beyond. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go over a list of about 13 that I wrote down. I got 14 floating around in my mind, but I'm going to stick with 13 for today because that's the baker's dozen. Amen. I remember when I used to go to Walmart. I don't know if they do that now. And by donuts, it was 13. They still do that? You don't know either? Been a while, yeah. I like going there because of it. Got an extra donut. 
I wound up wearing that donut. <laughs> amen. But a baker's dozen is, tw- is 13, amen. 13 mega trends you and I need to keep our eyes on. Not going to go through them all today. I'm going to read through a list of what I compiled, and then we'll go through several of them and we'll call it a day. But, amen, number one is cyber attacks and disruptions. We'll come back to that because you experienced one this week. Amen. See, that is a, a mega trend because you're going to see, unfortunately, some more of that. Number two would be something that is presently uh, uh, going on. Actually, they forecast for the 18th, right around the bend, the days the 16th, is a meeting in Davos, Switzerland called the Great Reset. We'll look at that. What are the implications for you and I in the body of Christ? Amen. Um, I call that a mega trend because they are pushing what's called an Agenda 2030. Amen. Uh, vaccine passports is a mega trend that we're going to see uh, developing more and more around us. Amen. Another thing that's popped up, amen, that we never anticipated. See, megatrends are things that are going to be with us that were unanticipated by us, amen. The divisions, amen. Satan is a master in division. And one of the things that has been done through the COVID-19 pandemic, amen, that's what I call it, is that Davos is just using this as an impetus to force this reset that's coming up in a few days. Now, you might not have heard much about it yet, but we'll keep you posted. Amen? It's the last day's prophetic sin. And so, another thing that is happening by way of division, you see it beginning to grow, a growing division between those who are vaccinated and those that are not. And it's affecting some of your families already. Amen? And so, that's going to be something that we're going to have to deal with because that, that path that our culture is on is going to be with us for a while. So I call that a mega trend. Amen. Another one, number five, would be inflation. Number six would be the rise of AI or artificial intelligence. Amen. That's one we really need to keep our eyes on as well. Amen. Something is coming up on the 1st of um, June called a UFO disclosure. Amen. Because uh, we'll get into that, not today, amen, but you need to be aware some crazy things may happen the 1st of June. And also, um, the days of Noah and next, the days of Lot. They are not the same. There are certain specific behaviors that were related to both with a blessing coming out of each for God's people. Amen. We need to understand some of these things that are going on. Transhumanism, number 10. Um, uh, technocracy, amen. Um, if you wonder why it seems like um, a lot of our decisions nationally are relegated to people like Dr. Fauci, that's based on this new form of government that's rising that we'll get into called a technocracy. That's going to be with us from here on out. And then there's persecution, the specter of it that arise against us. And as we read in, in Luke 21, Wars and rumors of wars. You know what's happening in Israel right now. What, what you're not hearing much about is how that the Chinese and the Indian and India have been clashing at their borders as well. Russia is directly threatening this nation. Matter of fact, Russians are behind this ransomware attack. And so um, we see a lot of these things on the horizon that are happening that aren't one-time events. They'll be ongoing the closer we get to the Lord's return. So today I want to look at some trends that are happening now. Amen. And so even though there's a trend in a path, a, a, a going in that particular path or direction, amen, some things are presently happening. Some are just down the road from us and some are in the distant future. So what trends are happening around us right now? Number one will be the cyber and the ransomware attacks. A week ago, you would not have dreamed that you would be running around riding and sitting in gas lands looking for gas. That caught us off guard, didn't it? Amen. Well, how is that trending? Well, based on the actions of, um, well, that was a colonial pipeline, right? That just affected the East Coast, and you saw what happened. Now, what if that same attack had have cut off all of our fuel supply? See, that's why Proverbs 22.3 says the prudent or the wise man foresees the evil 
and makes provision for himself. Amen? Well, why do you call this a trend pastor? Amen? Because they succeeded at what they try to do on a daily basis for the last few years. And, um, and so we have to understand then that this could become, you know, one of the things that they've been tell, telling us to get used to is a new normal, isn't it? Old normal's gone. Amen. You know, and so this is one of those things that disrupted all of our lives, didn't it? I don't know about you. When the words start coming out, you know, I went and gassed up everything we had. Amen. None of y'all did have a pastor, right? Amen. And some of us found out that by the time we got there, where we went, gas was gone. You know, I hadn't seen anything like that since the 70s. When I was a teenager, we had gas lands. It got to the point in the 70s to where cars with even and odd license plates could only gas at certain times. Who would have thought we would see something similar to that again? But it comes down to the fact that our reliance now is, is pr pretty much everything that is around us is in the digital world. And so that makes us particularly vulnerable to attacks in that digital arena where our trans, you know, you don't even have, I mean, if you were to knock out um, um, some of the banking through cyber attack, hey man, you could not buy or sell. When's the last time you saw a mechanical cash register? You would think they'd have one under, under the table to pull out. No, when things shut down, things are shut down. And so in this particular case, it was a ransomware attack. Basically, they took over the computer systems for this Colonial Pipeline and held it for ransom. You pay us X amount of dollars and we'll give control of your computers back to you. Turns out that what the software they were using for what I got it was old Windows computers. So you think these folks looking out for you, they didn't want to update them. Because often in this nation, we take safety and security for granted. Amen. We didn't realize that our enemies, amen, the, the Russians and the Chinese, even though they despise America, they're not looking to nuke us. That's generally what we think, isn't it? Amen. No, if they attacked us nuclearly, then the resources that are here, they couldn't use because they would be, hmm? So what? They would be no good because of radiation. They want the resources. No country in the world has the resources that America has. And so the idea is to knock us out so they could come and get the nation and the resources to supply their needs. And that's one of the driving things behind the cyber warfare and ultimately EMP warfare, which is a whole nother world of attack. They said if they were to knock us out electro electrically, within a year, 90% of the population would be dead. See, that's perilous time. And so they're probing and they're looking and they're seeking ways to disrupt us because we're so dependent. Russia, their technology isn't necessarily behind us, but by choice, they chose not to digitize their critical infrastructure like we did. And so we could go attack them, EMP, it wouldn't affect them. But they can knock out our electrical grid, which is attacked every day. And if somebody were to do with our electrical grid what was done with this pipeline in the middle of the winter, thousands would die, they'd freeze. And yet, yet we have refused as a nation to harden our electrical grid. So we need to understand, saints, that at any moment, our current lifestyle could be disrupted by a cyber attack. And so they held over them, you pay us $5 million or we'll just keep you shut down. And rather than say, look, we'll stay shut down, you know, if you just come out and say, look, it's going to take us a little longer to get this right because we don't want to concede and, and give the ransomware developers uh, upper hand over us because if they succeed here, they'll do it again in the future. They paid them off. Why is that a trend? That guarantees it'll happen again. And the stakes will be higher. It may not be five million this time. It might be 50. It might be a billion. Then what? And so 
We're vulnerable. And so a trending thing in the days to come, that's why I call this a mega trend. We might have to deal with this stuff. I pray we don't. But there's a possibility because of the capitulation to the ransomware developers, we may, may have to deal with these type things again. So let's not let our guard down. Let's stay as filled up as you can. Don't let it get down to empty anymore like you used to. It's not even good for your car to ride around um, under a quarter tank of gas with an electric fuel pump anyway. Amen. Amen. See, the prudent man is going to make provision. I see that thing. I fill it up. You don't know. Amen. Does that mean you're operating by fear? No, no it means you're making provision for yourself. Amen. Whereas before you were comfortable riding until you got to a quarter, maybe you're going to fill up at a half. Easier. And then people were gouging. I saw that somebody in Charlotte charged nine ninety nine a gallon. Amen. And so, you know, if, if you needed only a gallon or two, you might could bite it. But if you needed a tank full and you got a 30-gallon tank, the prudent man foresees the evil. Going forward, we need to be in a state of preparation. Amen. And while I'm at it, you know, you may as well get a little food in store, too. You know, we could have a food shortage. Amen. Amen. Get your freezer. Chicken wings high now. <laughs> Say you can't find them. See, that would be a shortage, wouldn't it? In other words, life is disrupted. You and I in the body of Christ. Well, I'm trusting God. God said make provision. Take heed to yourself. Amen. See, to Say that, well, because I'm trusting God, I, I make sure all this is going to be there for me. That's not faith. That's presumption. I started to say another word called foolishness, but I, I digress, amen, from that word. But we need to plan ahead, don't we? See, this is what the prudent man does, and we see these things trending, amen? Hallelujah. So let's do our part, Amen. We know that in the last days, things will get perilous, amen. Another thing that is happening now, amen, and these mega, this is happening now, the, the cyber attacks, we experienced this. What's happening now, too, is what they call the Great Reset in Davos, Switzerland. And, and what the world leaders are doing, they're meeting, and their intent is to continue to tear down the system. When you look at the decisions that we as a nation make, you know, um, all the decisions concerning these big bailouts. Saints, that can't be sustained. And if you're sitting around looking, man, I want them to do me a, another stimulus check so I can get a, a package, so I can get another check. The nation can't sustain that. And the end result of that is going to be hyperinflation. Y you must understand that there are people in this nation, politicians, one world government type people who want to crash the nation and they want to do it by overloading our, 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 our debt burden. It's already at 29 billion, amen, right now. Trillion, you can't even figure out what a trillion is. <laughs> You're talking about a thousand billion. Amen. Well, if you spend a dollar a day, it would take you 30,000 years to, pay, to make, hit a, 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 a billion dollars. It'd take 100,000 years to hit a trillion. We're talking about money we can't imagine. At some point, Revelation 6 talks about it as well. we'll when we get to inflation, I mentioned that. Amen? But this great reset, they want to tear the system down, and like President Biden's slogan was, build it back better. That's the slogan for the Great Reset, Build Back Better. Our president adopted that because they want to tear down our present, what they call it, capitalism. Amen. Capitalistic system and rebuild it into a social, one-world governing body that would dictate to you how much meat you can eat, where you can go, how you can go. Matter of fact, they even say you will be poor and you will love it. See, that's the green movement push. Amen. Sustainable development. How many of y'all heard that term? 
Well, you can't sustain electrical grid off a of windmill. Wind don't blow all the time. See, we got to use our head sinks. Amen. We are a petroleum-based economy, and there's enough petroleum here for the next thousand years. You cannot sustain our level of living off electrical energy. People just got it. I know y'all, it's a lot of folk, a lot of, some of y'all too, been miseducated. And you trust your electrical use to a windmill. And half the time you see those over there, they're not turning. Well, if they're not turning, they're not producing. The end result would be what we call rolling blackouts like California has every year now. I don't want to live like that. I want, when I turn my AC on and it's hot, I want it to come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, what about solar panels? See, this is what they're pushing for in this great reset. And all these solar panels we got here, it's cloudy here a lot. <laughs> see, you see, we don't think about that stuff, do we? So whether we're depending on wind or we're depending on solar, neither one of them is dependable because it's not always sunny and the wind is not always blowing. Well, I'm going to get me an electrical vehicle. Or where did electricity come from? <laughs> See, that's what they're pushing, isn't it? No, they want you on bicycles, beloved. That's why they're talking about mass transit. Amen. See, if we don't get ahead of the trend, we'll, we'll be shocked when they start pushing this stuff. Well, I'm going to go buy me an electrical vehicle. You know, so I can be environmentally conscious. Well, it takes raw materials to build a vehicle. You couldn't build it without petroleum. <laughs> Amen. See, America needs to think. Amen. They asked one person, well, all we got to do is, they said, all we got to do is plug it up. Well, if there's no electricity, it won't work. If the sun not shining and the wind not blowing, how are you going to charge your vehicle? <laughs> See, when you think about it, it don't make sense. When I got this reliable source right here, amen, and we got all this clean technology, and we want to get rid of it, but the nations of the world keep polluting as they do. We can't straighten the world out like that. Amen. And so this is a trend, amen. These things they're discussing right now. Amen. They asked me, if they had their way, the limitations on beef, you could only eat like the equivalent of a Big Mac, you know, a month in beef. Because they say cows put out too much methane gas. <laughs> they poop too much. In other words, you know, you know, there's not real science. See, what we're, what we're facing is the politicalization of science. And when science has an agenda, it caters to, to a technocracy. Amen. We're trending. Amen. Toward a great reset, which will be global governance. Amen. Another thing that's happening now is division through fear. Amen. You know, Jesus himself said in Matthew 10, 36, that a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Well, what's, what's dividing households now? You got your shot yet? You know, homes are being divided. Families won't come together because they won't know before they'll get together with you. You got your vaccination? Newsflash, it's not a true vaccine. Now, I'm not a doctor. I don't tell anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. Amen. But it is an mRNA, a messenger RNA shot. Amen. And it's not FDA approved. It's approved under an emergency usage because it's not FDA, FDA approved yet. And it's called a vaccine because you cannot sue a vaccine manufacturer. Amen. And so, but there are people and some in our families that won't meet with us or you because you hadn't had a vaccine. Now, how big of a leap is that going to be to where if I got mine, you got yours, and our governor floated this week that he was considering vaccination mandates? It's not going anywhere. 
But I happen to believe if they say over abortion, my body, my right, then what about my body, my right here? Amen. See, saints, our rights are being usurped and taken. And through fear, we've been manipulated into a point to where we will cede our rights to an entity that does not have our best interest in man. You know what we need to do? Number one, get educated. Amen. Don't trust. See, too many of us have been taught just to, well, they got our own best. No, they don't have your best interests at heart. Government is about control and manipulation. Amen. Pastor, you don't trust the government. Nope. Never have. Amen. And, um, and especially so now. In other words, we, we've got to think and be on our feet because it's our lives, it's our families that are at stake. Amen. But some of us from our conversations have already experienced that division. That's trending, and it's going to stay that way until they feel like everybody's in jail. Uh, and this isn't a new thing. We actually saw last night they did this in 1976. Man, when I was 18 then, I wasn't interested. I wasn't a news junkie then. But we actually saw old 60 Minutes report where they were advertising, you got to get your vaccination. And I was going, What? And this was for the swine flu. Only then they stopped it after about 50 people died. We've had thousands die and they're persisting. You know, but then 60 Minutes was grilling them about why are you doing this? Amen. And, and so our media has changed because they are trending in that same direction. And so we need to educate ourselves before we do certain things. Amen. But those divisions will continue. And, and so we need to, you need to strategize. Uh, what you're going to do if your family wants to get together and they say, well, not you. Unless you. So you got to make some decisions. Amen. But whatever decision you make, be informed when you make it. Amen. And by the way, they're already discussing what to do with the next pandemic. See, they saw it worked. And so they want this to be an annual thing. Amen. See, so you got to, you know, that's why we said after the first few weeks, we saw now, now there's an agenda here and we begin to buck the trend because you see how they are trending and then you decide biblically, what are you going to do? Amen. Hallelujah. Because you and I aren't, just, we're not cattle to be driven. We are sheep that are led, but we're not led by culture. We're led by the spirit of God. Amen. And we're led by the word of God and we obey the things of God. And so if, if, we, so if we're going to trend in a direction, it needs to be to obey him. Amen. So we don't need to just trust whatever is being pushed. We need to investigate. Amen. The prudent man foresees and he makes provision. Amen. He hides himself. And so we need to uh, be on top of the events of the day. Be biblically informed first, amen, and then educate yourself. But never allow fear to be the deciding, the, the thing that decides your actions. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And most of our culture is moved by fear, amen. It's funny, I, I, I saw on yesterday as well that Bill Maher, an atheist comedian, a little man now, he took his, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact they, they don't guarantee that uh, the injection keeps you from getting COVID. Amen. And he had his injections, both of them, and he got COVID. And so he was griping because now I still got to stay home. Well, they didn't say it would keep you from getting it. They said if you got it, you wouldn't have as bad of a reaction. Well, all people don't have bad reactions as it is. And if you still got a mask and social distance after you do it. Here's why it's not a vaccine. I'm going to educate y'all a little bit. What a vaccine is, and uh, anybody here medically, if pastor's wrong, straighten them out. But what a vaccine is, you, you take the, the infecting agent. Let's say it's a coronavirus or some other um, 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 virus, and you weaken it. And then you take that weakened form of that virus and you inject it into an individual and your body has an immune response and you produce your own antibodies so that when you're exposed to the real thing, your body knows how to handle it. Am I right? 
That's what a vaccine does. Here's why this is not a vaccine. You, they don't give people or don't inject a weakened form of COVID. They inject a national RNA or a, and it carries a message to your cells RNA to produce the spike protein. So your body begins to produce without having the weakened virus in it, which means a lot of people who receive that when they're re-exposed, they still get it. See, it's not a true vaccine. They call it that. But see, we don't search stuff. Amen? So if you take it, at least be educated. Amen? Hallelujah, because it's your body. And, and so it's not a vaccine in the true sense of the word, of the word. It's not a vaccine. I know some of y'all going, nah, nah, pastor just talking. Don't take pastor's word. You go search it. Be a Berean. Don't take my word for it. Go search it out. And then you can make an informed decision concerning what to do with your body. Amen? But see, that's trending. And they're going to do it again because it worked so good the first time. Amen? And so, but thank God, 14 states have already said, we're not following that. Amen. Now, I'm going to flip ahead a little bit concerning a technocracy. I wasn't going to mention this. Here's what a technocracy is or a technocrat. It's when you give the control of a culture or society, in this instance, a nation over to the decisions of the scientists. And so what you're hearing is that they're saying the science says, the data says, everything's based on what Fauci says. When you yield, you take the uh, rule of a nation away from the politicians and uh, notice even down up to the president, well, you know, Fauci said, he's a technocrat. And that's why he's always going to follow the data. Amen. He's not the only one. There are bunches of them. And so the science is saying, and he was in an argument this week with another senator and, and they were disputing that, well, what point do we have to get to for you to say that? We can lift all restrictions. He couldn't answer. The science, the science, the science. We don't want this to come back. And this is what we've subjected ourselves to. See, that is the beginning of a technocracy. Amen. So I'm educating y'all. Pastor, I didn't come to church to be educated. Yeah, you did. Amen. Because the Bible says this would be a major form of governments in the last days. When the Bible talks about you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark that's because the technology is there to trace everything you do. And what are they pushing? Contract chasing, digital passports. Amen. See, the stage is being set for the technocrats to say you can't work, you can't buy. Matter of fact, everything is so digitally controlled right now, they can cut you off right now. Me too. We get paid digitally. Most of us don't we. I guess it cut it off. Well, that's it for you. Amen. Amen. You know, well, you didn't conform. Amen. At some point, we could get to that place. And so what if it happens? What are we going to do? Well, thank God we won't be here when that comes to play. Amen. Thank God for the rapture. You know, they might try that before the rapture. All the systems are in place. The worship of the beast is not. Amen. Happening now. Somebody say happening now. Inflation. In Revelation 6, it's the black horse. And I beheld a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances. And then the next verse, Revelation 6, 6 says, amen, that uh, wheat and barley basically for a day's wage. Inflation is happening right now. If you go to buy wood products, um, two by fours that were $3 or $9 now. Whenever the price of goods and products outstrip your earning, your, your price, your earnings don't go up to enough to meet it, then you're subject to inflation. They said just the price of lumber has added $30,000 to a new home already. In other words, inflation takes away our ability to earn. And so this is a trend so we need to keep our eyes on it because if it affects gas, 
If it affects anything we use, everything goes up. The meat we eat, the vegetables we eat, amen, inflation affects it all. Amen. And one of the ways they want to manipulate our band is by raising prices on the goods. So if we want you to eat less meat, you raise the price of meat. Hmm. Amen. See, you tax what you want less of. Amen. And so they incentivize our decisions by taxes and inflation. That's not good. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we have less earning power now due to inflation. Amen. But go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. And I want to look at the days of Noah, Noah and the days of Lot. Generally, we tend to think about those being the same. Can y'all handle a little more? Amen. You know, and um, these are things that I call mega trends. Amen. The days of Noah. Amen. And here in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus makes some statements. And then again, those statements refer back to uh, Genesis chapter 6. In Matthew 24, verse 37, Jesus says, well, first in verse 36, he says, but of that day and hour know it no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That tells you and I, here's a mega trend, that the way the days of Noah were is the same way it'll be in the days that the Lord returns. The key is, how were the days of Noah? He goes on to say, Amen. Uh, verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Amen. Just continuing in life like, like no consequences to living until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Amen. The question is, beloved, how were the days of Noah? Amen. Well, Jesus said, yeah, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage, life is going on as normal, but there were some really strange things going on during the days of Noah. Go back to Genesis chapter 6. And, um, and so in the days of Noah, he said this is how it would be. So I need to see what was happening during the days of Noah that brought the flood to get a parallel between what will be happening in our day, amen, before Jesus comes. Verse 1 in chapter 6, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Verse 4 says there were giants in the earth in those days and after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and bare children unto them. Now, verse 5 says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great. So these would be wicked days. Amen. Well, we see that, don't we? That it was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We see that in our day, don't we? Amen. And it repented the Lord that he made man on earth and it grieved him at his heart. But a parallel that we see going on during that time as well, we see a demonic incursion. Maybe not in the same way that it happened in Genesis, but we see men being moved to alter our genetic structure. I have an article where they produced a man and monkey chimera. What a chimera is, is when you take the DNA of, in this instance, of a human and they inserted it into a monkey DNA so that that monkey would have human characteristics. They say they killed it after a couple of months. But they've done that with mice. Amen. We've seen mice where they had actually genetically altered the mouse embryo so that the mouse would grow ears for implantation in humans. I got videos on that. See, we just got to take time to show it. We got some mad scientists out here. Amen. You thought they stopped when they did the sheep cloning and stuff like that. They're looking. And the, the race we're in militarily right now is that there is a push in the nations of the world to produce superhuman. Amen. And who wins that has the upper hand that forces this nation into it. See, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. 
Remember the Bible says, as the days of Noah. We're playing with DNA. Matter of fact, one of the scientists from Moderna to have his article and the video where he's saying, we are tampering with the software of life. This is what the MNRA is. It's encoding our DNA to produce. So it affects our DNA. They don't know if that's a permanent change or if it can be passed along uh, to our children, but they're tampering with our genetic makeup. They call it tampering with the software of life. In other words, by even saying that, they admit that our DNA is a, is a computer code. See, we're not accidents. Amen. We were wonderfully made by God. Amen. And when you start crossing over, they call that transhumanism. When you start integrating animal and human DNA producing chimeras, and the Bible says, what do you think some of the beasts during Revelation may be? Amen. See, there are a lot of strange things happening in that book that might be a result of our manipulating human and animal DNA. But he said during those days he would return. Well, we're in those days right now. See, this is one of the evidences that, you know, curse and judgment came on the world, but God delivered his people from it. Amen. So we're not going to go through that. He's going to deliver us from it, but we can be affected and afraid of it if we don't understand what's happening. Well, Pastor, what about the days of Lot? Amen. We could spend a whole um, a study just on the days of Noah there, but we can't in this setting. Amen. Happening there also is the days of Lot. Now, the days of Lot, there was destruction and judgment as well. But the type of sin was entirely different from the sins that were in the world described in Genesis 6. Amen. Now, also during the days of Noah, before we get, get there, you ever notice a lot of people don't want to hear the gospel now? A lot of people getting cold to hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that was part of the days of Noah. Now, could you imagine Noah, how they ridiculed him? Had never rained on the earth. The earth was watered by mist coming up out the ground. And God says, build the ark. Build you this big old boat, amen. About 900 feet long, amen. You build this big ark. He's got to hire people to help do that. I used to joke and call it Noah's folly. Can you imagine the ridicule? And he preached to them. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. We believe, amen, uh, uh, maybe for up to 120 years without a convert. And we get upset when we witness somebody and they don't get saved and we quit. We need to be like Noah, don't we? We're to keep sharing the good news, whether anybody that we know of respond while we're doing it, we're to be faithful to God. And so Noah, during this time, in this hard season, you know, when, it, when they, they saw the animals coming, you would have thought they'd have woke up. God sent them two by two and some in sevens. You would have thought when the ark was finished and you start seeing lions and tigers and bears and birds and, and, and snakes and everything coming up that you would, uh, <clears throat> something strange going on here. But see, the hardened heart doesn't receive the things of God. And then they all go in and God shuts the door. Can you imagine standing out? See, my, my sanctified imagination. See, y'all just read the scripture. I like to kind of envision what's happening there because that's what the Bible says, doesn't it? Noah couldn't shut the door. He was inside. The Bible says, who shut the door? You would have think all those people who have been mocking and, and Noah over those hundred or so years that he's working on the ark, when the animals start coming and they go in and then they see this huge door begin to close because God is shutting it. And then something happens that it never happened. It begins to rain. And all of a sudden it dawns on them, Noah was right. When Jesus catches us away, a lot of people are going to realize those crazy Christians, they were right. But it's too late. And um, in the days of Lot, Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 17. The days of Lot and the days of Noah. Amen. And so things are trending in that direction. We see that growing hardness, that dullness to the things of God. And unfortunately, we see a lot of believers falling away. 
because they didn't anticipate the last days would be like they are because they weren't familiar with what the Bible had to say. In Luke 17, verse 28, the Bible says here, let's go to verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, notice Jesus says that again, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. And then verse 28, he says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. So he uses both of them in this one illustration, different types of sin, as it was in the days of Lot. Notice they did ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. They're living life as usual. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man shall be revealed. Well, we know historically what was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities in the plain. There were five cities in the plain. Not just Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, but two others as well. Well, what was the major sin? It was homosexuality. Amen. And it was pushing it to the point to where they even threatened to pull Lot out and rape him. The angels pulled them back in. In other words, different type of sin, but whether it was the sin in Noah's day or the sin in Lot day, they were both came after both of them came a judgment and a separation of God's people. What are we seeing in this day? All types of um, aberrant lifestyle style being pushed, even on our children. They're going to push books in kindergarten. Trying to tell kids that, you know, they could be anything they choose to be sexually and even develop yet. What's behind that agenda? In other words, it's, it's pushing, it's coming after our creation roles. We can't change who we are. Our DNA verifies who we are and our physiology as well. See, we got to deal with this both spiritually and psychologically, amen, because something has snapped. And, and so we've got to understand that this was prevalent in that, di that day, and after that day came judgment. But what did God do? He took Lot out first. See, both of these are um, things that give us hope because as we see wickedness and evil and, and these lifestyles being forced on us, God will judge, but God will also deliver. There's a dual stream. And so we've got to choose to be faithful and serve God no matter how the world trends. Amen. The Bible even says that Lot was vexed. See, in, in Moses' day, Noah's day, you know, they just didn't believe. But righteous Lot, the Bible call, calls him in Peter, he was vexed by the sins of the city. In other words, have some of the craziest stuff the world is doing gotten under your skin and bothered you? See, that's vexing you. I don't understand. How could they do that? They just found a four-year-old child laying in the street in Texas dead. How could you do that? On my internet feed this morning, I saw where a lady admitted she took her baby boy and threw him in the trash. That's without natural affection. How could you do that? that There's no natural bond between the mother and the child. How could you do that? They just got a lady in Tidewater this week, you know, cured her baby in some satanic ritual. How can you do that? Amen. Last days, saints, no natural affection. Amen. But God is going to catch us away from it. Because as the days of Noah and the days of Lot were, and judgment came, God delivered his people. Amen. So we have to have a hope. Jesus is coming. Amen. But we see these things trending, not so we can be afraid. Amen. The last one I mentioned today is persecution. Amen. Here in Luke 21, verse um, 12, amen, we see this rising against the church as well. And one of the things our persecution is going to ride on is whether you've been vaccinated or not, whether you conform to the woke culture or not. Oh, that's 14. I could add another trend. Amen. Because what's woke, they want to get rid of. Actually, the woke culture is communism rising, socialism. If I don't agree with what you say and believe, we'll cancel you. Amen? They call it cancel culture. And most Christians aren't prepared to deal with it. What if your family cancel you? Will you compromise on Jesus? See, if you don't fortify yourself before it happens, we can't have you at our gathering because we can't do what we want to do while you're here. Amen? 
you know, I, um, I remember when, when I was in car sales, you know, I, we were a hindrance to the partying at the get-togethers because they had a respect for our Christianity. You don't see that now. You know, you know the drinking and stuff didn't happen until we left. <laughs> Matter of fact, we were talking about that yesterday. People going to say, when you going, Jake? <laughs> now the world don't care. See, there used to be an honor even among people that wasn't saved for the people of God and what they stood for. See, we're beyond that now. Amen? Notice in Luke chapter 21, if you learn anything, say amen. In this same setting of this discourse, Jesus goes through and he says, Before all these, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to synagogues and into prisons. You know, Christians, we've really seen this in Canada this year, have been thrown in jail in solitary confinement because they dared to have a church service during COVID restrictions. We've had that here. In California, couples have been thrown in jail because they had Bible studies at their house during COVID. That's persecution. Amen? And so we'll see a trend towards some of that even the more as we're closer to Jesus coming. Why? Because the message we preach, the God we serve, the things we believe don't fit into the world's narrative anymore. Amen? To them, we're narrow-minded, we're homophobic, and we're bigoted when actually we love people enough to confront their sin. Amen? And we love our God enough to assemble together. We love his word to believe it's true. But those things aren't culturally accepted, and they'll seek to press and persecute you. But the Bible says in Matthew 5, blessed are ye. See, we got to realize that there's always a blessing when we stand for God, even if it's hard to stand for God. He said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you. That means to say ugly things about you and persecute you. Amen. And despitefully misuse you, he said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. Amen. He also said, for so prosecuted they, amen, those that were before us. Amen. See, we got to strap our, pull up on our, our, our boots on to be willing, willing to endure, amen, based on how the world is trending. They don't love us. And so you and I need to be willing to stand, but Jesus said we're blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what should the church be doing now in closing? Number one, you need to make God your security. You need to realize God is a very, Psalms 46, when it says, he is a very present help in time of need, that God is with us. He had said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, I can boldly say the Lord is on my side. Amen. And so God is on my side. I don't need the world on my side. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm not trending with the world. I'm an anti-trender. That's pastor's term. Amen. What you mean? We're in the world, but we're not of it. So the direction the world goes, we can't go. Amen. We're going to stand against the tide in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we got to make God our security. Amen. It's his truth that's our shield and buckler, Psalms 91.4. And so we got to make his word the thing we stand on. We got to make God our source. Somebody say, God is my source. You know, God can meet our needs even if the electricity ain't working. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But there's a caveat, I need to be seeking first his kingdom. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of, and God and his righteousness. God's way of doing things and being right, the Amplified says. And all these things shall be added unto you. See, if we're seeking God, we're living for his glory. We're serving him irregardless. God can still meet our needs independent of what happens in the world. Amen. But see, we got to be in the right place, positioned the right way in our place called there. Amen. That was one of my favorite messages, according to many. Amen. But see, it was there God commanded the widow to sustain him. If Elijah had been anywhere else, he'd have missed his blessing. See, we got to be sensitive to the voice of God. Amen. If we follow where he leads, there'll be provision in that vision for our lives. Y'all hear, Pastor? Amen.
God commanded the ravens to sustain him by the brook. If he said, Lord, I don't see how I, 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 I can eat by a brook, the ravens would have showed up with the food and Elijah wouldn't have been there. See, we ought to be sensitive in this day to God's voice. Amen? God uses people to address our needs, but he can be supernatural in how he gets that done. We got to trust God. We got to make God our security. Amen? We got to trust him. Amen? Make God your source. Amen. Look at Hebrews 6, 18. We got to make God our hope. See, we can't place our hope in man or in government or in the systems of this world. He says in 6, 18, we might have a strong consolation and lay hold upon the hope set before us. That hope is Jesus who has gone before us. In other words, saints, make the Lord Jesus our hope. We got to have our expectations in him, not of government, not of men, if we're going to survive and not trend like the world, if we're going to stand in Jesus' name. Amen? And then, beloved, you got to make God your protection. Amen? In Genesis 15, 1, the Lord talking to Abram here, he says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto him in a vision, unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. You know, as God says for you and I, we're not to be afraid. Amen? We read earlier that men's hearts fell in for fear of things they see coming on the earth. One thing we'll mention in the week to come, on, on, on June 1st, the CIA is supposed to do what they call a uh, UFO disclosure. Now, I know that what they say ain't going to be true, but it can shake a lot of people's faith. The Bible says men's hearts fell in for fear of what they see coming on earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We're going to see some strange things coming up to the Lord's return. But Jesus has already anticipated and said, don't be shaken. He said, even if they say Christ is here, he's there, don't let that get you either. Amen? The Lord said, I am thy shield. The word shield means protector and thy exceed and great, great reward. He's our reward as well. Amen? See, we got to allow God to be our protection. We can't trust in uncertain man. Amen? We can't trust in the ways of the world around us or our government. We got to trust God. May God your shield. Amen. And lastly, in Psalms 91, we need to dwell in him. Just name and tell him, neighbor, make God your dwelling place. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Now, the secret place is where we go. We all have to, we need to have our own relationship with God. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. And so that means we need to work on our own personal walk with God. Amen. You know, you read your Bible. You study your Bible. You develop your prayer life. Amen. See, if you're going to abide in him and his words abide in you, then you can ask what you will. But you need to abide in him. He that dwelleth. Somebody said dwelleth. In the secret place, nobody sees you there. Of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and then you need to speak right. What should you be saying? I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. See, he's your refuge. He's your place of safety in me. Amen? And so we've got to go through this. You need to get familiar with this song, that he is my refuge. Amen. That he is your fortress. In other words, he's the place that fortifies you. It's where you get your strength. Amen? And the last part of the verse, it says, in him will I trust. And so we've got to trust him. See, that's a, a formula for how we need to keep ourselves in this last day. Amen? See, we want to claim the angelic protection, but are we dwelling in the secret place? Ooh, pastor. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We say, hey, he's given his angels charge over me. Yeah, but there are some other th things that that text of Scripture mentions. Amen? Because he has set his love upon me. See, we need to love God above all else. Therefore will I deliver him. Amen? And so we've got to get familiar with the word of God and work the word. Amen? Amen? So that we won't get caught up in the direction that the world is trending in. Amen. We're going to trend closer to Jesus. 
We're going to draw nigh to him. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to me. Amen. We're going to speak the word of God over our lives and over our bodies and over our families. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand on the scriptures and trust God irregardless of what we see. And so no matter what we see, our hearts will not fail for fear. Why? Because we dwell in his secret place. You and I know he said this is how it would be when he returns. And so we're people made ready because he said when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads. Your redemption draw it now. Amen. In the middle of all this calamity, God will deliver. And in the middle of all this calamity, God will provide. In the middle of all this stuff, God will make a way for you and I as people. And we have streams in the middle of the desert. Amen. And we have his glory to cover and to keep us in Jesus' name. But we've got to do our part, draw nigh to him. Amen. See, it's not automatic. We need to work on our individual relationship with God. Don't take your spiritual walk for granted. Don't take your spiritual life for granted. Amen. Don't ever fall into the trap. I'm too busy to read God's word. Amen. We got to feed our spirit to feed our faith. And when our faith is strong, our trust is strong. In Jesus' name, let's bow our hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I know that we've said a lot of different things over the course of this message. Lord, we've said some things that, in a sense, God could kind of uh, make us wonder, Lord, what in the world is going on? But God, we thank you for the surety of your word, our covenant, our promise from you. God, you said that in the middle of these things, God, you would keep your people and deliver them. And so, God, as we see these things happening, Lord, we have assurance that the world is not falling apart. Actually, things are falling into place, Lord, as we approach your soon return to receive us unto yourself. But, God, I pray that the knowledge of what is happening around us and the way our culture and the world is trending would develop in you and I, and this is what we pray, a sense of urgency to realize the time is short and there's much work to be done, God. Light a fire unto us, God, we pray, that we'll be compelled to reach out to those that we love, those that we meet, and to share the good news of Jesus with them in Jesus' name. God, help us to find each and every opportunity, Lord, and to use it to tell somebody about your saving grace in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to use us today, God. God, we're not in terror. We know your word. But God, we ask you to use what we know to reach somebody else so you can be glorified in Jesus' name. So God, we yield ourselves to you and to your word. And we pray, God, that you would use us Give us a heart for the lost, Lord, compassion for those that are around us, Lord, that we can reach into their lives and present Jesus. And God, I pray for boldness for us all as well, that we will stand as lights in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Wherever head is bowed, if there's anyone here not knowing the Lord Jesus, and you say, Lord, I want to settle that issue. And I see what's happening in the world, but God, my heart is not right with you. And today, Jesus, I want to turn the control over my life, of my life over to you, Lord, and receive you as my Lord, my Savior. If that's you today, amen, wherever he is bowed, just raise your hand, amen. So, Lord God, today, I give you my heart, I give you my life in Jesus' name. I don't want to take my eternity for granted, my salvation for granted. I want to serve you now the rest of my life. You know, God will bless you to walk it out in Jesus' name. If only you're willing in Jesus' name. You know, maybe if you walk with the Lord and you've fallen back. Amen. And you said, today, Jesus, I come back out the world. Jesus, I return to you. You know, he said, if we're faithful and just to confess our sins, he will forgive it and restore us. Maybe you've fallen away and you say, Lord God, today I, I return. I, I'm coming home. Receive me. God, I've been a prodigal, but now I want to serve you from this point on. If that's you, just lift your hand as an act of faith. We'll pray with you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just raise your hand. Amen. Nobody see you but me. Amen. Is there anybody? And we'll pray. In Jesus' name. The 
And Father God, I pray in Jesus' name for us, your people. Bless us, embolden us, and use us as we commit our will, our walk, and our way into your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>